A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a harp and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not pass over it, and fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One day, as Jesus was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they sought to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and go home. And immediately he rose before them and took up on that, he took up that on which he lay and went home glorifying God. And amazement seized them all. And they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. The Gospel of the Lord. So as we've been looking over the last week now at all of the beautiful graces that come to us through Christ in the Incarnation, we see in today's Gospel passage uh, the power of God that he has as God uh, for healing. This beautiful grace and power that Christ has uh, to heal and to accomplish whatever he wills because he is God. And so from the first reading today where it speaks from the prophet Isaiah about the coming of God who will be in their midst and he will heal, how he will heal blindness, how he'll heal the lame, how he'll heal those who are deaf. And what we see in Christ is all of these beautiful healings, all of these works manifest in him. And so in the gospel for today, he's in Capernaum. He is teaching there. He is in one of the houses where he is teaching. And the Pharisees, and we can see all the teachers of the law have gathered from all around Judea. They've come from everywhere in Galilee and even from Jerusalem. They've all heard about Christ and they've come to investigate and to see who he is. And you can see that these men, it says, bringing one of their friends who was paralyzed on a bed because he was unable to come to Christ himself. And so in their charity and their love, they bring the other to Christ. It's a beautiful image of intercessory prayer is where we bring in our prayers those who do not have the strength or the capacity or the ability to bring themselves to Christ. Through intercessory prayer, we bring them and place them before the feet of Jesus. And the Lord, hopefully, like he did in this scene, when he sees our faith, he at times heals the ones who are brought for interse with intercession. Unable to find a place or a way to get to Christ, we can see that love perseveres and finds a way to place this man in his presence. They continually act with love and faith. And the Lord, who is always pleased by these things, looks into their hearts and he sees it. Even from the beginning of this scene, we see him doing things and acting in ways that only God can act. He looks into their hearts and he sees what is happening in their hearts. Only God can do that. And so they bring this man to the Lord for healing, but they bring him for physical healing. So you can imagine their surprise when they lay him down in the presence of the Lord, expecting that what they want is immediately obvious. And then the Lord, when he responds, he does something that is not initially what they wanted. 
They wanted him to heal their friend of his paralysis. The Lord looks deeper and he sees a greater need and he heals the man of his sinfulness. The Lord always does what is most important first. Even when we sometimes come and bring our prayers to the Lord, sometimes what we are asking for is not what is most essential. But the Lord often offers answers what is more essential, what is more important. And so he says to this man, your sins are forgiven you. Again, doing something that only God can do, which is to take away sins. Everyone is then shaken by what he says. And they start thinking in their hearts, it says in the Greek. They begin questioning in their hearts, in their interior, who is this that speaks blasphemies while they are blaspheming themselves against Christ? Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? So they've seen that Christ has forgiven sins. They know that only God can forgive sins, and yet they can't seem to come to the conclusion that he must be God. Their hearts are hardened against Christ. Their hearts they have made, again, fixed against him. They will not open their hearts to the Lord. When he perceives their questioning, so what he does is he begins to show them that he is God by doing things that only God can do. He perceives their questionings in their hearts, and he answers out loud the questions that they have asked in secret. He shows that he is God, able to see even the secret questionings of the heart. Why do you question in your hearts, he said? Which is easier to say? And now he shows his powers of, as God, which is that he is able to do things by simply speaking them. As he spoke creation into existence, he is also able to speak and to heal. Which is easier to say? Each is as easy for God to accomplish because it is, it is simply a matter of speaking it into existence and into happening. Which is easier to say, rise and walk, or your sins are forgiven you? And to show that he has this authority and this power, which is the power of God, he says to the man, I say to you, rise, take up your bed, and go home. And we can see that his words have the immediate impact and power that God's words always have. In creation, when the Lord separates light from darkness, it happens immediately, instantaneously in response to his almighty power. And so as the Lord says to this man, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and go home, it says immediately. He rose before them, took up that on which he lay, and went home glorifying God. The miracle has had the right effect in this man who was paralyzed. And everyone else, it says, amazement seized them all. It's that same word for being knocked out of yourself. All of their thinking, all of their expectations, everything has been challenged. They are filled with amazement, but still can't seem to come to the conclusions that they should come to, which is that this man, Jesus from Nazareth, the one who has been teaching them truth, the one who has been healing with the power of God, is the promised Messiah, promised through the prophet Isaiah. This is God in their midst. Amazement has seized them all, and yet at times their hearts are still closed. So we pray in this season of Advent, as we contemplate the great mystery of Jesus Christ, all the beauty of his works, that our hearts will always remain open to welcoming him as he comes to us here, in the Blessed Sacrament, as he comes to us in his grace and in his love through the sacraments of the church, and as we long for his second coming, because we long for the one who has loved us and for whom we hope to increase in our love. Amen.